Good morning. I hope everybody's uh, having a great weekend. I know I am. I've been up for a little while now. Got a lot of work done. Excited about answering these questions for our members. And before I do, I want to just uh, uh, suggest that everybody think about somebody that they can invite to be part of AO. I mean, there's just no organization like this that I've found that helps people trying to get to a million dollars in sales. And in addition to that, most of us that are between a million and five million are still benefiting from AO. And so I think anybody that you do business with, that's your friend, you should encourage them because it's inexpensive to be part of this uh, tribe. And I just think all, what Sean is doing is awesome for all of you. And I hope you all will take more advantage of it. I know a lot of you underuse it. So let's get started with the questions, okay? First question is, how can I overcome the fear of starting a conversation with someone? I'm in network marketing. I'm looking to build relationships with people. I am great interacting one-to-one -one with people when the conversation is flowing, but when it comes to starting a conversation with a complete stranger, I feel like sometimes something's just blocking me. I go through how the conversation will go in my head and it sounds great, and when it actually comes to start the conversation, I just have this mental block and procrastinate over doing it. What are the ways I can overcome this? Okay. So for you ladies that are watching this today, I'll tell you something you may not have known that every boy or man before he calls a woman for a date goes over in his head what he's going to say. He doesn't just pick up the phone and ad lib. It was where I realized that scripts work in life. <laughs> But anyway, um, so everybody is uncomfortable talking to strangers. Most people do not naturally talk to strangers. Now for me, I've done it so many times that it is natural to talk to strangers. But I came from a, a family where we weren't having a lot of social interna interactions. My parents were at home. We didn't have a lot of friends. We never went to parties. I can never remember going to a party except for you know, the holidays with my family uh, in, growing up. And so I didn't have a lot of chances to learn how to talk to strangers. But I'm gonna give you some things that I did to overcome the same issue that you're talking about. By the way, this is um, uh, Corey Stevens. Um, so anyway, uh, Corey, this is what I did. I memorized my opening lines. I memorized my opening lines. So I still get nervous when I get up on stage to give a speech. And, you know, I've, I've spoken to uh, as many as uh, 20,000 people. But I will tell you, I'm still nervous when I get up on stage. And so I memorize what I'm going to say. So the first rule of breaking the ice with somebody that you don't know is to memorize what you're going to say. And this is, this is what I say. Uh, I, I say, hi, uh, where are you from? Hi, uh, where are you from? And they tell me where they're from and I nod my head while they're answering the question because I know that by nodding my head, it makes them feel more comfortable and reinforced and they will talk more. 66% more information from someone nodding their head than from someone not nodding their head, okay? So then whatever they say, I try to find a common uh, thread. I don't expect them to ask me a question. I have the second question ready. How long uh, have you been here? I nod my head. How long have you been here? Where do you work? Where do you work? And those are my three opening questions. And by that time, I've engaged them in a conversation. But I have other backup questions in case I haven't. For the hard case, you know, who just is very difficult to engage in a conversation, uh, I go, uh, how long have you worked there? Where'd you work before that? Really? And um, I guess if they're from a community, a state, let's pick, say they're in a little town in Ohio, I go, I guess you're a big o Ohio State fan, huh? And I find something that will engage them. Do you have kids? You just have to memorize these questions, Corey, okay? Next, 
Oh, by the way, everybody has butterflies like that. Don't, don't think about that, Corey. Don't worry about it. Just realize that, um, you know, you just have to teach the butterflies to fly in formation. Okay? Um, next question. Um, hey, Quade. Good to have you. It looks like it's just you and me now. Um, <laughs> so Quade asks the second question. Um, what makes more sense, targeting one specific field, scaling, then expanding, or slowing the growth process and build systems for all targeted avenues along the way? So Corey, attend, he intends to scale his company to operate across many facets of construction. I'm new to scaling business, so your experience will be of great assistance. I'm unsure whether it is smarter to learn all the avenues I wish to pursue from the start or start with a direct focus and expand as we scale. Extra info if you need it. Uh, my thoughts are the more we keep in-house, the better numbers we can pull. However, that entails more risk as I need to employ a much larger team. Focusing has benefits of building a reputable name in the same field. However, this will cause lost time learning the other fields. So from reading that information, Quaid, I have no idea what you do except that you're in the construction business. And so this is some advice to all of you that are submitting questions for all of the vendors. Be very specific about what you do in your question and we can give you a better answer, all right? But in general, Quay, the narrower the focus when you start, the better. So I work with a member of AO, and Dan, and he builds decks. Dan does decks in Denver. And anyway, uh, Dan, keeps getting spread out. And my advice to him always is, let's just focus on decks. If something else comes along, fine, but let's just focus on decks. And anybody I work with, and like Eric Blandino, who's been in AO for a long time, you know, Eric, he focuses exactly on what he does. He does rat exclusion and mice, and he doesn't handle the bats. He doesn't handle the raccoons. He doesn't handle any of the other critters that invade people's homes. He just does mice and rats. And by focusing in that way, he's limited his expenses, he's limited his risk, and he's allowed himself to, to grow. Okay. Next uh, question is from Busham. I'm sorry if I am mispronouncing that, Busham. Um, but his question is, how exactly do I make a buyer persona for my mobile app? development business. How do I know I have created the right ones and do locations affect personas? Like do I need to create a different persona based on each agent I'm trying to target? Here's the background. I have been going through the materials in our AO portal and I have a basic profile persona field but still confused about how to make them concise for my business. A little background. I've started a new mobile app development business in 2020 in India and I've worked with two clients. Clients came through referrals. I want to have a steady flow of projects and inquiries and I would like to target specifically and not at random. This is my first question, but from the materials in our portal, I've learned that it's better to target specifically than to target any and all. I know this might be a broad question, but any and all feedback would help. As for the clients, I have had international customers from UK and US and they were both startups. After a while, they asked for features and changes for which they didn't have the budget and I lost the client and money. So I don't want to create a persona based on such customers which would lead to similar experience again. Currently developing AO app for our community, so that's a third project. And I would like to take on clients from across the globe. Would love to get a feedback on how should I go about locations in the personas and how do I how do they affect them, okay? So I worked with a business that did mobile apps and websites twice in my uh, consulting uh, career here in the last 10 years. And one grew to be uh, about a $7 million business, uh, 150 developers in India. And the other one uh, is struggling still. And the reason uh, is one did outreach and the other waited for people to come to them. And so the first line on your business budget is revenue. And so you've got to figure out how to get revenue. And I'm sure you're saying to yourself, oh, that's my question. 
and I think it is your question, but you know, let's get to the point, right? How do I get more revenue in my business? First of all, you've got to get a prospect list. So on LinkedIn, there are lots of entrepreneur groups. You can go on LinkedIn and join every one of those entrepreneur groups because the person that's going to need an app, usually at your level, is going to be an entrepreneur. And then secondly, once you identify those, you have to outreach to them. And not broadly, but directly. I noticed that you have started a, uh, biz, uh, a uh, construction business and we specialize in apps for the construction business. And then you help them. You, get, you see somebody in there that uh, has a spa and you say, we specialize in apps for spas. And you send them a direct message, could we engage in a conversation? And some will engage with you and some won't. But the point is that you're doing outreach and you've got to do a lot of outreach, thousands of outreach. You know, I called him twice and he never called me back is the thing I hate the most. Because we know from the research that it takes an average of 20 outreaches to get a hold of somebody you don't know. So that means if it's the average, some will be 40 outreaches and some will be one outreach. And so the point is you've got to start doing outreach as much as possible in order to build your app business. Personas, don't worry about that. Worry about how many people you're touching and then making them feel like you specialize in their industry, okay? And that is my best advice for building your app business, okay? Next. Um, this is from Martina. Hey, Martina. And her question is, what sort of strategy do I have to do to achieve my target for this month to reach 2,500 points? Last minute goal. Now, from that question, does anybody listening to this understand what her business is, what she does, or what she's trying to do? No. But she does give us a little background that'll help. Uh, I'm in herbal life marketing and personal training industry online. This goal, my goal this month, is to get or to even better over 2,500 points, which seems like a mission ATM. Uh, best messaging, been messaging people, uh, adding people on social media, Facebook and IG, but not having much luck. I am determined, but how else efficiently to attract and sell my nutrition programs? Thank you for your help. So Martina, you need a sales system for your business. You need a system and you need to work that system consistently and you need to work long hours in that business. Bill Gates says when you start a business as an entrepreneur, you shouldn't take any vacations the first two years and you should work every weekend. And this is one of the richest men in the world, one of the five richest men in the world. And so <clears throat> if you look at any of the great entrepreneur stories, they, the first element of their story was that they worked their ass off and you need to too. Okay, if you aren't working 60 to 90 hours a week, you aren't working enough. Now, the second thing I want to say is that you need a prospect list. Yes, adding people on Facebook and LinkedIn is good. Those become your prospects. But unless then the second thing you're reaching out to them with a consistent message, you're not going to sell them. Being their friend on Facebook is not going to work. Tell them that you have a nutrition program, are you interested, is not going to work. You have, to out, you have to reach out to them. Hey, I've got an exciting new business. I'm working with people to make them healthier. I'd like to talk to you about it. Could we set up a call? That kind of message, right? And then if you have their phone numbers, just call them on the phone. You know, hey, I'm just calling to see if I could have 15 minutes of your time at some point to introduce you to a new nutrition idea. Would you have some time tomorrow for 15 minutes or, or is now a good time? Okay, so in other words, you get a script and you use that script when you do outbound calls and outbound messaging, okay? But so many people expect their business to just boom because they tell people about it. The world will not build a path to your door if you build a, a better mousetrap until you're, unless you're actively telling them about the better mousetrap, okay? 
Okay. Um, next. Oh, this is from Corey again. When do you know if it's the right time to approach your prospect with your product or opportunity? I'm an independent distributor for a global health and wellness company, Network Marketing. After establishing a relationship with the prospect and building rapport with them, how will you know when it's the right time to approach them with your opportunity or product? How will you go about approaching them all with what you have to offer? So, Corey, um, do you have a prospect list with at least 100 names on it? If you do, that's a good start. Then, do you have a script of what you're going to say when you approach them? That would be the next thing. Third, you block out time where you do nothing but approach these 100 people and try to set up a time for you to tell your story about network marketing. I work with lots of network marketing companies and I've helped people build unbelievable teams uh, and unbelievable income for $500,000 a year from network marketing. But the, the secret to that is activity and you've got to get activity that reaches out to people and tells your story. Then once you get some appointments or some people that will listen to you, you've got to have a script developed that sells your product. Sometimes the network marketing companies give you a good script and sometimes they don't. Whether yours does or not, you've got to get one. And the script should follow a pretty basic outline. You know, establish a four, find or create a need, the, benef the features, benefits of your product, and then an obligating question that asks for action. Okay? Next. Um, this is from uh, Sean. Not our Sean, but uh, Sean Drumco. He says, what are proven and recommended ways to launch an online service and obtain subscribers? Uh, this is a resend from Ask a Millionaire. I've developed an online service called Master Estimate based on a tool I created for managing the budget of my real estate projects. I've had a beta test period and now I'm ready to announce the official launch of the service, Master Estimate. It provides a framework for estimates that combine scope of work, deliverables with a draw schedule of progress payments and completion points. This enables real estate investors, lenders, contractors, and landscapers to know the numbers as projects start and monitor the numbers to project. I plan to initially target real estate investors. As I get subscribers, I'll enhance the service and target other user groups. Okay? So, sounds like a pretty good idea, Sean. Um, now, you're going to have to sell it, right? So, real estate investors think that's a great idea. If you think you're going to just find that list somewhere, think again, because I have lots of people who say, where do I find a list of real estate investors? And I go, I don't know, you have to do the work. Uh, there are LinkedIn groups for real estate investors. There are real estate investor coaches, uh, and I would start there. And then once I had prospects, I would figure out a way to communicate with them, either by direct message on LinkedIn, email, or phone call. And then I would begin uh, telling my story. If you had a real estate coach, and there are plenty of them out there, that encouraged people to buy investment properties, and you could uh, partner with them as a channel partner, and you could pay them a commission for the members of their group that they sell your app to, it might be a way to get a faster start. But nevertheless, you're gonna have to start by making a prospect list. Does this seem like a current, uh, a common thread that runs through everything? Get a prospect list, know who your target is, craft your message, then make, your outreach, and then make your uh, uh, explanation of your product, your presentation clear and concise, organized, get an obligating question, get answers to objections that you hear most commonly, find out the best method for answering objections. That's, that's what everybody should do, okay? Now, the next question is from Martina again. So Martina, Quaid, and uh, Sean are the only members of AO who've asked me a question. And I say this humbly. There's probably nobody you're going to have access to that has built as many businesses as I have successfully that you could ask questions of. 
and yet we have three people this morning who have taken the time to ask questions. Now, I'm going to encourage everybody that looks at this to ask questions of all the mentors. You know, um, if, if I were in this group, I would be wearing us out, all the mentors, about how we can help you and answers that will save you time and money. Okay? So, back to Martina's question. Where do I look for new clients other than Facebook and Instagram? And how do I maintain a flow of a new of new clients every month? Uh, personal trainer online, my clients come and go. Uh, I need to make sure that I have a consistency in my work and cash flow as my clients often go on holidays or have personal reasons. Where and how do I get new clients and how do I ma mainly maintain them since I only charge my clients pay as you go? Okay. So, Martina, uh, I've worked with a lot of personal trainers, and in fact, uh, the last two that I worked with fired me because they didn't have any more time to book personal training. And so, there is a system for that, but you have to do outreach. You know, you have to think about where you, where you are training. So, I'm assuming you train in a gym, and I'm assuming you split with the gym. So, you get the gym to help you promote. You get the gym to give you introductions to people who come to the gym at times you're not there. In addition to that, there are plenty of Facebook groups and there are plenty of LinkedIn groups of people who are interested in personal fitness, physical fitness, and that want trainers. And then you have a sphere of influence. Make a list of who you know and ask them to introduce you to people that you can tell about your service. Don't ask them to introduce you to people that need a personal trainer. Ask them to introduce you to people that you can tell about your service. And it's just like advertising. The more people you expose your business to, the more chances you have to make a sale. And so, you know, again, it is partly your time management and then partly your outreach that will cause you to build a successful personal training business, okay? Um, I hope that helps. But there are other members of the group who have successful personal training businesses and you can reach out to them. You can even form a, a buddy club with them, an, uh, an accountability club if you will, and you can have phone calls with each other to hold yourselves accountable to the activities you have to do in order to make your personal training business grow. Okay, But you know, uh, most problems are solved by getting up and doing something, okay? <laughs> okay, last question. Corey again. Um, when selling online, do I talk about the benefits and uses of my product? I'm a distributor of a water ionizer which has seven different pH waters and over 64 uses anywhere from health pure drinking water to hygiene care, eco-friendly cleaning, etc. Are there resources on this? Okay. So again, we'd all love to sell our products online. We just love to sit at the desk and have orders come in that we fill. And there are some businesses like that. But most of the successful online businesses, at least in the beginning, started with personal outreach, either a sales call on the phone or a sales call in person. And what I'd recommend is that you get a prospect list and you begin making phone calls to set up appointments to demonstrate your product. Now, I've worked with two different uh, water uh, purifying companies. Both of them sold by go basically going door to door or by hooking up with a realtor that would introduce them to the people in the last who bought the last home. So, Bill, my name's Tom Black. I work with Realtor XYZ and he's arranged for you to have a discount on your water ionization system in your new home. I'd like to set up a time when I can come by and show it to you. And that system has worked very well for both of these companies. Uh, one got to be a multi-million dollar company, $10 million company sold, the owner went to Costa Rica uh, and that's where he lives now. And the other one is struggling, but it was because of COVID and people not wanting uh, them to come into their house. But both of those, but both of those use that method successfully uh, to sell their product. Okay, so I hope that helps. Um, again, 
uh, Sean will be happy to introduce any of you to the mentors so that you can arrange personal phone calls with them and get a more in-depth answer, answer to your question. Uh, Sean will also help you um, hook up with any of us as mentors, as coaches. And so, um, you know, there's nothing like having a mentor or a coach to help you get your business going, okay? So, thank you very much. That's all the questions today. Now go sell something. Go sell something today.